In a recent paper entitled Hope versus Hopium, climate scientist James Hansen suggested that the rate of global warming was increasing owing at least in part to a reduction in fine particulates being ejected into the atmosphere. In this video, I will show that we now have good evidence that regardless of the cause or causes, the rate of global warming has indeed been increasing substantially in recent years. The evidence that the rate of global warming has been increasing recently can be seen by examining the monthly global average surface temperature results provided by the Japan Meteorological Agency, JMA, over the past year. The JMA provides monthly global average surface temperature data going back to the year 1891 in charts such as this one for April of 2023. In their charts, they include a trend line obtained by a linear least squares fit to the data. This trend line gives an estimate of how the global average surface temperature has been increasing with time. For April of 2023, that rate of increase was 0 0.77 degrees centigrade per century. The results for May 2023 show a trend or rate of increase of 0 0.74 degrees centigrade per century. Here are the results for June 2023 with a trend of 0 0.73 degrees centigrade per century. Note that June 2023 was the warmest June by a significant amount since the start of the JMA data set back in 1891. Here are the results for July 2023 with a similar trend of 0 0.72 degrees centigrade per century. Note that July 2023 was by far the warmest July since the beginning of the JMA data set in 1891. The results for August 2023 are similar, with a trend of 0 0.73 degrees centigrade per century, even though August 2023 was the warmest August by far in the JMA data set. The results for September 2023 are similar to August 2023, with a trend of 0 0.71 degrees centigrade per century. Also note that September 2023 was by far the warmest September in the JMA data set. October 2023 is similar to September 2023 with a trend of 0 0.70 degrees centigrade per century. October 2023 was by far the warmest October in the JMA data set. November 2023 is similar with a trend of 0 0.72 degrees centigrade per century. And November 2023 was by far the warmest November in the JMA data set. December 2023 is where we start to see an increase in the trend with a value of 0 0.78 degrees centigrade per century. Here we have the data for January 2024 and the increase in the trend is apparent with a value of 0 0.82 degrees centigrade per century. With the data from February 2024 included, the trend now is 0 0.83 degrees centigrade per century. And likewise for March 2024, with a trend now is 0 0.89 degrees centigrade per century. This provides more evidence that the rate of global warming is accelerating. Let's examine how the global warming trend has changed over the past 12 months. We see from this chart that the global warming trend declined very slightly from April of 2023 through November of 2023. This very slight rate of decline from April through November likely was a seasonal effect, but starting in November, the rate of global warming began to increase significantly. 
Carrying out linear least squares fits to the trend line data for the past 12 months, we find that during the first eight months, April of 2023 through November of 2023, the global warming trend declined slightly, probably owing to seasonal effects. But starting in November, the trend began to increase at a significant rate, so that over the entire 12-month period, the global warming trend increased by about 16.6%. This is a very significant change in the slope of the trend line, but the actual increase in the rate of global warming must be much, much greater than this change in trend line slope. The reason is that the trend line is obtained from a linear least squares fit to all the data since 1891, which masks to a large extent the contribution to warming from the most recent decade or so. Global emissions of carbon dioxide have continued to grow unabated in recent decades. However, the rate of growth of these emissions has not been sufficient to account for all the acceleration in global warming. Several additional factors must be contributing to the recent current acceleration of global warming. These include a reduction in sulfite particulate emissions owing to a low level of volcanic activity globally recently, and a reduction in sulfite particulates in the Northern Hemisphere from ocean-going ships because of new regulations. The light-colored sulfite particles tend to reflect incoming sunlight. Their absence or relative absence allows more incoming solar radiation to reach the surface of the Earth. Snow and ice also help to reflect incoming solar radiation. However, in the past few decades, there has been significant melting of glaciers and a reduction of sea ice owing to warming oceans. The loss of ice and snow cover over land, together with reductions in the amount of sea ice in both the northern and southern hemispheres, definitely contributes to the warming of the planet. And as the oceans warm, that causes more water vapor to enter the atmosphere. Water vapor is a very effective greenhouse gas, so it helps to trap heat at the surface of the Earth. This is one of the reasons that we are seeing so many new nighttime high minimum temperature records being set. The release of methane from melting permafrost in the Arctic is another contributor. Methane is a potent greenhouse gas. And as the planet has warmed, we have seen more wildfires. Wildfires, along with agricultural burning and wood burning stoves, release additional carbon dioxide into the atmosphere, and they also are potent emitters of black and brown carbon particulates. Unlike the light colored sulfite particulates, which tend to cool the planet, these black and brown carbon particulates in the lower atmosphere tend to trap incoming solar energy, resulting in a net warming of the lower atmosphere. It's likely that all of these positive feedback effects are contributing to the acceleration in the rate of global warming. In addition, some of the recent acceleration in global warming also has come from the long-term weather effect known as the El Nino Southern Oscillation. A strong El Nino developed in June of 2023 and peaked in December of 2023. This caused significant ocean warming of almost two degrees centigrade in the eastern tropical Pacific Ocean. But because the El Nino driven warming was relatively localized and has abated since the beginning of 2024, it cannot account for all the rapid acceleration of global warming that is continuing. And the positive climate feedback effects must be playing a major role. Clearly, we are entering a new and dangerous period of global warming. Wherever you reside on the planet, 
The recent climate news is not good, but we still have it within our power to reduce the effects of climate change by limiting the emission of greenhouse gases, such as carbon dioxide and methane, by reducing our use of fossil fuels. If you have any comments or questions, please post them in the comments section of the video. I will do my best to respond with scientifically accurate information. Thanks again for watching.